so how many of you are familiar with NumPy? Okay, and how many of you like use NumPy in your projects, like creating arrays, managing them, storaging them? All right. Yeah, and so yeah, this is the question. How many of you heard about Zar? I would obviously. Yeah. I would be proud if if I if I get a one hand. But yeah, no worries. So yeah, so Zar is basically a storage format for basically storing big big arrays into small chunks like dividing them into chunks and into com and compressing those chunks so you can essentially store store very big data into very less space and that's just like one of the benefits of using zar i would be going through like all of them so this is supposed to be a lightning talk so lightning talk are usually like 10 to 15 minutes so yeah, i'll try to cover it I, I have a notebook with me which i'll go through like what how it works so so yeah, let's move on excuse me is it like task uh, so I think Pavitra would uh, Pavitra? Pavitra would give you a better idea about Dask. So that's why I have aligned my talk, aligned aligned her talk just after mine. So you'll get the idea in probably in a few minutes, like how Dask and Zar interpolates. They basically work with each other. Yeah. So yeah, uh, about me. Uh, so I basically take care of the community and the uh, open source software of the Zar. So Zar has like multiple implementations in like uh, Python, Julia, R, JavaScript, C, C++, and R. Yeah. So and Python being the most used one. So I take care of the community and the software for the Zar, and uh, I have been associated with them for the past three three months. Yeah, three and a half months. And uh, yeah, I have been leading Pyreta Delhi for the past six years, and for the last two years since the uh, COVID. We basically switched to a, a virtual version of the conferences, which was basically Pyreta Global, and I was basically leading that also. So I managed the conferences for Pyreta Global in the pandemic. So this year Pyreta Global is also happening, but it's gonna be a virtual. It's, a, it's also gonna be a virtual one. So more of that. And previously I worked with forensics, uh, forensics uh, with the uh, government of India on a research project, startup and organizations. And yeah, sometimes I love to play the violin. I have a violin with me on which I spend a lot of money. I didn't know like, violence was so expensive, but yeah, it's great. And if you like the talk, you can follow me or just go through my Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. And the, the photo that you see on the right side is a pixel pixelated photo of me, which is I use basically in my free time also do pixel art and pixel graphics. So there's that. So it's kind of like an old fashioned thing, but yeah. Uh, so what I'm gonna show you, so Basically, yeah, what is R and how Zar works and why I use R, like there are so many, like there's, there are different ways to store your data. Then why why do you want to use Zar? There's like HDF5 TIFF, GRB TIFF, Cloud TIFF and Zar and all that. So why why do we use Zar? And what is Zar specification? And the implementations and lastly the community and the future. So yeah, so a little bit about like Zar history. So Zar was created by Alistair. Uh, Alistair is basically a, he basically works on the malaria malaria mosquitoes like genome sequencing and find out ways how you can basically avoid uh, prevent the disease like making vaccines for the diseases that comes from the malaria mosquitoes. And it was it was uh, so Zar was basically uh, committed on the GitHub and uh, GitHub repo in 2015, and it has a rapid growing user base and it. Uh, Based on in, and it, it's always uh, industry ready. Like uh, Zar is mostly used like in the uh, in the areas where the data is like in TVs, like the uh, microscopy environment, like the climate environment, and the geospatial stuff and all that area. And currently it has 21 core devs. So this is basically for the Python implementation. So every implementation has their own set of core developers, and this is for the Python developer, Python de Python implementation. And it is fiscally sponsored by NumFocus, uh, which is basically I just told you about. And it's funded by CZI. CZI is basically the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, which is by Facebook, and under EOSS. EOSS stands for Essential Open Source Software. So it has a lot of affiliation, affiliation, uh, affiliations and funding to support and keep going for the for the upcoming future. And these are the these are basically the social links for like the website and the GitHub and the Twitter. So if you want, you can just check them out. So this is the yeah. So this is the basically the uh, sample of how data is basically how beautiful the data looks when it's stored in Zar. So the, on the left side you can see the oceanography. Uh, so 
I'm not sure. I, I, I don't think I'm qualified to elaborate like how these colors variations are, but it's something like the okay. It's a sea surface temperature. It's the apex from the right. Yeah. And the other one is a micro, it's a microscopy image, which is basically a photo of a cell tissue. So yeah. So so these images. So you can see like these images are like uh, very beautiful and all that. But the size of these images are quite large. So uh, I don't know like how many of you familiar familiar with the image of the black hole which uh, got released a few weeks ago. Yeah. So are you? Uh, so do you have any idea how large the data set for that image is? Like it's in. Yeah. So it's in like it's it's huge. It's hugely large. So we need a, we need a format which 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 can basically take care of those like big big files and render them to your uh, you know your basically a web portal or something like that. And it could it it could it, it there should be like you know. Uh, I would say features and uh, I would say uh, or I don't know maybe abilities to prevent the loss of the data and render it render it uh, efficiently. Yeah. So before Zar, uh, let's have a look like how, what an array and tensor is like. How do we store data basically? So uh, so array is basically like a container of items. Like how how do you basically store your data? So on the so if you if you start from the left side, that's basically a one one dimensional. So there's a data is like a simple array, and the, when you go to the, towards the right side, it's like a two dimensional, and if you go towards the rightmost side, it's like the n dimensional. So like uh, three dimensional plus extra dimensions, and uh, the, yeah. So how you basically how much data you occupy in your disk is basically defined by the how many bits you are taking. So it's like eight bits when you're taking eight bits, sixteen bits, then thirty-two and sixty-four, and it goes on and on. Sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, and on and on. Then, uh, like, how do you basically define the dimensions of the data? Like one D, two D, three D, like, and n D basically, having multiple three D sets. Uh, so yeah, so basically, ZAR is an open sport, open source spe specification format. So uh, specification is like a keyword here. I would explain like in a like in later slides like what a specification means, and it's basically a specification for storing chunk compressed and n-dimensional arrays. The last three terms, chunk compressed and n-dimensional, I would elaborate in the next slides. So yeah, basically how does R work? So if you have a small data set, you can essentially just create a numpy array using ones or zeros and just store it on your disk. Like, but what if the data you want to create is like larger than the disk, like disk space you have? So like, what if the data is like too big to fit in a memory? Then what would you do? Any ideas? Like, this is a question. Any ideas? Lady load. Sorry. Lady load. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's possible. Anyone else? Loaded in chunks. Smart by one. Yeah. So that's what basically Zar does. Yeah. So yeah, basically yeah. So chunking like like basically basically breaking the data into small parts is the uh, basically solution for that. And uh, so what does basically ZAR does? So this is uh, so this is like a picture of like a uh, representation of a big blob of data, like a big monolithic file of data. It could be like in TBs or it could be like petabytes or maybe more than that. And what basically ZAR does is you basically essentially divide that uh, big array into small chunks. And when you create a uh, basically a data in ZAR, you have an option to specify the number of chunks you want to divide it. And uh, it basically compresses each chunk. So every chunk is basically taken out from the big monolithic file, and it is being compressed using the codex. So it has 20 supported codex, basically compressors. And BLOSK, the uh, so anyone familiar with BLOSK? So BLOSK is a basically compressor to compressor to compress your data. And BLOSK is basically the uh, default compressor for storing your raw data. And it has a range of compressors. You can choose any one you want. Which one is lossless? Yeah. No, uh, not everyone. So you need to basically browse through like the every uh, definition of the. So BLOSK is lossless, but all the other like I don't think like ZS TD is like lossless. So so it depends on the data you are using. So and this is basically the link for the number uh, for the codecs uh, which are available in the ZAR. And uh, yeah, so the so yeah so there's here's a here's a here's a interesting thing. So uh, usually what happens when you access your uh, big data like a NumPy array. And you call it the whole. The whole data is being like loaded into memory. But in ZAR, you can only retrieve the chunks you want. Like if you want to retrieve only like two or three chunks from the big, big to big monolithic file, you can only retrieve those chunks. And only those selected chunks are being loaded into your memory. And all of that file is into just in your, into into your disk. All the file is in your memory. So yeah, there's like, uh, yeah, I'll just show you in the, 
in the notebook like how does that work and uh, so this is the uh, representation of how the array like the group of the czar looks like so you you so the uh, pink yeah so the pink one is basically the binary blob which is the actual data and it has a key so basically point 0.1 0, point 1.1 1, 1. 1. 1. 1 is basically the key for the data and above that you can see z array z address that's like the metadata for the for the for the uh, for the file and it has all the information for the data which is being stored inside the chunk binary block and uh, the metadata kind of uh, acts like a stick when you want to retrieve your chunks from the data and yeah, it, it acts like a basically the information for the whole file that you have on your uh, disk and yeah uh, so this is basically the uh, representation of basically how ZAR works and uh, the how the mapping works basically so you can see there's a sh the shape is like 14 by 14 chunks and the chunks are 7 by 7 so if you divide the 14 by 14 chunks into 7 by 7 you can see there are like four chunks divided and every chunk is basically assigned a key 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 value with it like 0 0.0.1 point or 1.1 1 .1. and when you set a chunk it basically get does everyone able to see the slides yeah i think i'm standing in the way so yeah every chunk is basically compressed and you can use you see basically uh so this is basically the uh, output after compressing the chunk and it's in the binary format and every basically so you know the first chunk which is so, so uh, point one uh, the chunk having the address point one it, it will be stored with a key key value in a key value pair and in python basically it uses the mutable mapping to retrieve and uh, basically assign and retrieve the chunks so you we can use set item for set uh, for uh, for storing the data along with the key and we can use get item to retrieve the data using the key so it's like fairly easily like if you're familiar with the uh, python dictionaries and the uh, mutable mapping you can retrieve the data and basically assign the data yeah so there's that and uh, so here here are the like couple of uh, more interesting things about SAR. so arrays can be written and re read and written concurrently from multiple threads and processes so uh, there are other formats out there like uh, if you're familiar with HDF5 it's uh, it's like a similar to ZAR but the, uh, the concurrent reading and writing is not possible in that so if you want if you want to so that's basically like parallel processing yeah. so if you want to write write or read data parallelly to your chunks at a single time that can be done using ZAR and it's easy to extend and append the uh, arrays using just a simple operation like numpy like slicing and everything and so the so what I showed you was basically chunking along the col uh, row wise, but you can also chunk along the column wise dimension. So you can chunk along any any dimension. And chunking basically means like dividing the big file into small small parts. And uh, yeah, so extensive compression support, which basically means like it has a lot of compressions you can use over it. And we are always adding new compressions, which are like state of the art. So yeah, you can use anyone. And it's like fairly easy to plug in any compressor. You just need to uh, change the parameter when you're creating the creating the data, and it supports a local and cloud storage system. So that so for that by mean uh, from that uh, what I mean is basically it's basically a key value store. You have a key and you have a value. For every for every chunk you have a key and then you have a value. So if there's any system which can exploit the key value storage, ZAR can be used over there. It could be a local storage. It could be a cloud storage. It could be a storage uh, on a I don't know maybe a IoT device, but if, if that can ex explore the key value storage, ZAR can be used over there. And uh, it has a simple and open source, uh, open, simple, and it's basically based on open source specification, so which allows it to be hackable. So, specification, uh, yeah. So, what do I mean by specification? So, specification is basically a technical document which basically laid out the rules how the ZAR areas are stored. It basically says uh, talks about the rules how metadata what's the format of the metadata how the chunking basically goes and how the uh, compressors should work so basically kind of like a set of rule like a covid protocol so it's like a czar protocol something like that and currently the version 2 is in effect so yeah so due to due to the uh, specification being open ZAR, the com it has been you know beneficial for the community to implement the implementations of czar in different languages so Python is the most used one. That's we all know. But Julia, JavaScript, and C, uh, C, C plus plus, and Java, and I think R. So R is like a little bit slow, but it's keeping up. And the computation in R is like super fast. Like 
probably comparable to C and C++. So yeah, so there's that. And uh, yeah, so V3 is rapidly in progress. So we are working like super fast on V3 and V3 has like some really exciting features. So there's a, there's a feature called sharding. Like, is anyone familiar with sharding? Yeah. yeah. So sharding is, is basically gonna be implemented in V3. And after sharding, it's gonna be just like super great. So yeah, there's that. And uh, yeah, these are the links for the different implementation. Did I miss anyone? Uh, so yeah, so I missed R, but yeah, R is like. So uh, the uh, Python implementation is hosted under the GitHub of Zar developers. But all the other implementations of Zar basically are hosted under, like NetCDF is basically a company, Unidata. So they are hosted under there. Julia is, Julia implementation of Zar is hosted under Julia data. So, which makes it kind of like a, like a, you know, how the things in super open source world works. You don't need to necessarily come under the uh, Zar, Zar uh, organization to allow, you know, to make your implementation. So yeah, that's the uh, good part. And uh, I mean, we are, yeah, we usually do invite folks from the other implementation to host their products under Zar developers get up, but it's, it's their choice. It's their own free will. And uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna, wrap up in like five minutes. So Zar community and future. So basically Zar community is like a general community work for a, every open source project looks like. It's like diverse, it's vibrant. Everybody's welcome over there. You can join the Gitter, or get, uh, you, can, you can join a Gitter channel and chat over there if you have any queries and all that stuff. And uh, recently I have authored Zep. So Zep is basically a community feedback process to implement changes in Zar spec. So anyone familiar with PEP? PEP, PEP. Yeah, and uh, so there's similar like NEP for NumPy. So I kind of like authored the zip for ZARS, for ZAR changes. And uh, yeah, I, I've talked about V3. Uh, let me see. So I do have a notebook. I'll just take like five minutes of your time and uh, just let you go through like. So any questions or is anyone keeping, uh, everyone keeping up with me so far? Anything which seems superficial or made up or mm -hmm. hypothetical? Although every, everything is over there on the GitHub, you can check out the code and you can try it out. But yeah, feel free to, yeah. yeah So we do have like already the implementation of impl Python implementation of SAR. So yeah, yeah, but uh, sorry, I don't think I have a good answer for that because we haven't talked about that. Maybe in the coming future, but you can feel free to join our getter and you know, you can maybe ask that question over there and I'm more than happy to help you. Yeah, uh, so there's a notebook. Uh, there are like a couple of, uh, so just a second. Is it visible now? Yeah. So yeah, a couple of uh, a couple of you know uh, basics to review your NumPy, like uh, how you can create your arrays using NumPy zeros, and you can define the shape and the data type over there. And you can use the MB bytes to get the how much space it's taking on your memory. And you can basically uh, getting a piece of data with slicing. So slicing is basically the operation which is used to basically uh, display the uh, the selected portion of your whole whole array. And uh, you can create a new array and assign to it. So basically, what I what I did over there is I created a big bigger array using 1450 dimension and uh, data type uh, float and then I assigned the uh, the a uh, the a array which I created previously to the first uh, ten by twenty of the b of the bth array. And if you check the uh, so this was basically ones and the above one was zero. So if you check the zero zero address of the b, it was zero. But the last address, so that so this basically means that you are assigning for the for the last ten and the for the for the last twenty. And you can see the minus one, minus minus one will give one point one because it was uh, because we created numpy zero over here. And uh, so yeah, so that's like the basic of numpy. Uh, everyone good with that? 
great. Uh, so these are the, like the fundamentals of ZAR. So there are like three, three type, three things to basically take care of. Like you should know shape, data type, and attributes. And you just need to import ZAR like a simple library, uh, Python library. You can import it. And you so basically you uh, mention the shape over here. So here I used thousand by thousand. Uh, I, I could choose like ten thousand by ten thousand or one million by one million. It won't slow my laptop because the uh, so yeah, I'll just show you. And I've chosen chunks 10 by 10 and data type float and the store is test 2.0. And, and so there's an info function which basically shows you the information about the array, uh, ZAR array that you just created. So you can see the uh, size is like 7.6 MB, but the store, storage is only 3.1 bytes. Because, so, and the chunks initialize are 0. So it, it won't take any space on your, on your uh, on your disk until it is initialized. So you can store essentially like 1 million by 1 million of ZAR array. And it will just show you the what would be the apparent size of the array when it, when it will be initialized fully. So in here it is like 7.6 MB. But it's taking only 341 bytes because no data has been returned to it. And as soon as I write data to it, it will start, it will the chunks initialized would uh, change. And uh, for the time being, this test 2 dot ZAR, there is no file created. I'll show you on the finder, like the tech, uh, on the explorer window, like how it works. And the chunks initial are only zero, zero out of one thousand. Yeah. So let's uh, say the data is already stored, right? And we're reading it. So do we need to always read according to the chunks that we have stored? Uh, so let's I, say the data is I, I'm having to, uh, thoda, thoda Okay, so uh, let's say we have the data uh, some storage. And you already have a data stored. Yes. Okay. Let's probably it's S3. We are reading the data from there. We need to know about the chunk size. Basically, we use initially to store the data while reading the data. Okay, because it's you can, you can use a z dot info to get the all the information. Okay, the basically the yeah. yeah, and so here's a here's a beautiful thing. You have the data. You have the data with you, and uh, you want to load only a couple of chunks from that already written data. So you specify the chunks over there, and will read only selected chunks over there. Let's say we already have some data stored somewhere. We'll basically need to read it via ZAR and then store it at another sort of location to actually utilize uh, you know, the power of ZAR. No, so so you want to basically read the data from one source and store it to another source. So let's say I want to process the data, right? It's stored huh. in S3 bucket. Yeah. I want to process that data hmm. for the first time. Yeah. Let's say. So uh, I think uh, like from what I can understand, uh, ZAR so will not be of use until unless, like, uh, let's say I want to read some part of the data only. Okay. But it's not being, like, the info is not already being stored with ZAR. It and is. The metadata yeah. is not stored with ZAR. Yeah, so. Uh, then will it be able to? Yeah, uh, I need to switch the slides here. Uh, just a second. So when you store a data, okay. oh, sorry, not this. Yeah. So, so this whole thing is stored, and this is these are basically the metadata. So you already have the metadata with you. When you store a file. That will happen if in case we have stored with ZAR, right? Yeah. But but you can convert your existing data into ZAR. Okay. There's right. a convenience function in ZAR which okay. basically converts your data into ZAR, and the metadata file is already automatically created at that time. Okay, that's not a big process. I feel like I'm running out of time. So I'll just uh, I'll take the questions after the after the notebook, uh, like uh, in the networking session, right? I just need to complete this notebook. Everyone with me so far, yeah. And uh, so yeah, so no data has been returned to it. And if I do a fill value, it will show like zero zero because no data has been returned to it. Yet. And so yeah, this is how we store data. So this basically means that one will return to all the all the all the all, you know all the only places of the ZAR, on the on the places of ZAR arrays. And if I do a like a zero zero, it will show you my one. And so when I do Z info. So what I basically did was uh, I initialized uh, I did like stored one in all the places. So all the chunks are initialized. 
the number of bytes stored are like uh, it's, it has changed. Basically, it was initially 341, it's now 459.3k. And uh, you can see the default compressor is like BLOSK, which all the and the chunks are basically shaped 10 by 10. So we have a thousand by thousand big music file which is compressed in like 10 by 10. So data is being stored, like one is being stored in every place, compressed with BLOSK, and how much it, this is how much space it is, it is taking in your um, actual actual disk space. Disk space. Uh, yeah. So the last thing is like the attributes. So you can assign. So this is basically how you can man, uh, fiddle around with your metadata, and you can uh, assign your attributes using the simple Python list, and you can print your digs over here. And so this is how. Uh, so basically, the store function kind of, uh, which basically stores you. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So ZAR basically lets you look under the hood how your basically tree hierarchy is organized in the in the ZAR in the ZAR chunks, and when you do a simple tree function which is like a terminal command and use a head over there, you can see like the metadata metadata is at the top and all the chunks are like initialized with like different keys like point one point point zero one uh, point one point one zero point one one and so on. And if you do a simple uh, JSON because the metadata is in JSON format, and if you open with, with JSON and you can see all the information over here, like the chunks, compressor, D type, filter value, everything and all. And uh, yeah, so there's that. And there's one thing I wanted to show you. So this is the test 2.zar which I basically initiated at the start and you can see everything is over here. All the chunks are over here. So you can see the transparency of like how you can manipulate and add data to your chunks and all the chunks are over here. You can see and if you just, these are basically like simple arrays. You can load it using any format you want. Uh, I don't think, yeah, exactly. I, I need to open it through the notebook, like the path and No. Yeah, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I hope everything is clear now, right? All right. Thank you.